What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Code Porn, the show that has nothing to do with porn and everything to do with cleaning up your ugly, code-filled MVC views. In this episode, we're going to look at an up-and-coming MVC view engine called Parrot. Parrot is a view engine written by Ben Dornis that is available for MVC4, JavaScript, Nancy, and I believe a Rails port is on the way as well. Both Parrot and Ben have received quite a bit of attention, being mentioned and featured on ASP.NET, MVC books, and even grabbed the attention of Scott Hanselman. The goal behind Parrot is to have clean views, meaning you have no code in them. I bet if you step back from the last view you wrote in MVC, you'll probably notice plenty of ifs, fors, and who knows what else that just clutters the view and makes it hard to see the intent. Some of the goals of Razor were to be compact, expressive, fluid, and easy to learn. While it does provide an improved experience over the default view engine syntax, it can get really messy. This is where Parrot shines, and with the aspect of succinctness and number of keystrokes, Parrot puts Razor to shame. If you're familiar with CSS selectors, then you feel right at home with Parrot's syntax, since it's basically a superset of CSS selectors. Until Parrot comes bundled with MVC, you can get the latest version from NuGet by looking up Parrot ASP.NET. Once it's done installing, you can start adding Parrot views. The Parrot team has integrated with your MVC dialogs so that you can add a Parrot view as you would a Razor view. But as of this recording date, it has not yet been released. So for now, just add a new text file and rename it to have a .parrot extension. You'll get an index.parrot file automatically in your project when you install the NuGet package. You can have both Parrot and Razor views side by side in the project. However, if it comes to a conflict where there is an index for both Razor and Parrot, Razor will take priority. This can be overridden by inserting the Parrot view engine first in your list of view engines. You can, however, have the index as a Parrot view and the About page as a Razor page though, which is pretty nice. Let's take a look at the syntax now. There will be no angle brackets used to define tags in this file. To define elements, simply type their tag name and you're done. Let's add a div, a paragraph, an anchor, and a span. When we view the page source, we see that's exactly what we get. Now let's get some text into these elements. We do this using the pipe, followed by the text that we want to insert into the element. Anything after the pipe is treated as text and is terminated by an end of line character. The given text will end up as the element's inner text. If we refresh the page, we'll now see our newly added text. Let's go back in and add an href to our anchor tag. To do this, we use brackets, and inside, we define the attributes as key value pair separated by space. If we were using something like knockout, we could define our data binding attributes using the same method. Since element IDs and classes are important in today's JavaScript world, we need a way to define those. Now you might think we would do it inside of the brackets, but we don't. To define an element with an ID, we write the element tag followed by a hash and then the element's ID. So our div now has an ID when we view the page source. To define classes, we use the dot notation. So we'll add a class to our div by adding dot green box after the ID. Specifying multiple classes is just as easy. Simply chain them together. We'll set up the span with the red fill and a bold text class. If we view the source again, we see the classes applied to the elements. Let's move on to nesting elements. For single child nesting, we use the right angle bracket followed by the element definition. So if we wanted to nest a link inside of a paragraph, we'd write it as p, angle bracket, and then the anchor tag definition. For multiple children, we use a set of curly braces. So if we wanted a set of paragraphs inside of a div, we'd open it up with a curly brace, add our paragraph definitions, then end with another curly brace.
if any of the paragraphs have children, they can be opened up with curlies the same way. Now that we've gone over the basics of syntax, let's look at something a bit more useful. I have a demo MVC project that displays a list of contacts. You can click on a contact and it'll take you to the contact detail page. It's nothing too crazy, but if you notice, the site looks exactly like a default MVC project does. Everything you see is being rendered by Parrot. I've converted the default layout that is written in Razor over to Parrot, but we'll go over that later in the episode. Let's start out with our controller. At the top, we define our model, which is of type people. In the constructor, we populate some dummy data. Then we have the index, which calls our index view, passing in our model. The about page I've left alone. It'll use the default razor template. The contact action finds a contact based on the ID passed into it, and then loads up the view. Let's open up the index view. Let's see what's going on in there. To start, we're telling Parrot to use a specific layout using the layout renderer and specifying the name of the layout. Nested inside, we have a declaration for an H1 with the text of contacts. Then we declare a div with a class of contact list container. Inside of that div, we have an unordered list with the ID of contact list. Now notice that we have the word model wrapped in parentheses. Remember, our model is of type people, which is a collection of person. What's going to happen is Parrot will iterate over our collection, and for each item, it will output a list of item tag with the class of details that will contain a link to the contact action so we can view the details of the contact. Each link will have the text of the contact's first name and last name. That's pretty much it. But there is actually an optimization that could be made here. It's certainly up to you, but since the div only has a single child, we could remove the curly braces and just use the right angle bracket. It'll work all the same. In the contact view, we have our layout renderer, again followed by an H1, that displays the contact's first and last name. Then we have a paragraph with the ID of contact details, followed by text for the phone number, and then another paragraph with the address details. To get line breaks in the output, I'm using the line break tag before the next tag definition. This is because if we added the BR in the text above, it would simply not be recognized as a tag and would be treated as text. Let's take a look at the way we use our view model, which for this page is of type person. We aren't referencing the model directly, only properties on the model. The model is already in scope. So just adding an at symbol followed by the property or its path will do the trick. Notice that we're building out the address using the model's address property, which itself has properties. So address.street, address.state, etc. If you're using Parrot for its intended purpose, you may think that this is a little unclean. Well, we can clean this up using scoping. To put the address in scope, we can wrap it in parentheses on the paragraph tag. Now we can remove the address bits and just reference the address properties directly. Let's have a look at the default layout that comes with an MVC project and compare it to the Parrot version that I created. I literally cloned the Razor view line by line and translated it into Parrot. I won't go over the code, but what I wanted to show you is what you should have already noticed, that the file is much smaller and cleaner than the Razor view. Like I said, in terms of keystrokes, Parrot puts Razor to shame. Keep in mind that Parrot is still in active development. To keep up with how it's progressing, follow Ben Dornis on Twitter at BuildStarted and visit thisisparrot.com. You can also find the source code for Parrot, which is available on GitHub at github.com slash parrotfx. All right, that's it for this episode. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and visit codeporn.com when you have nothing better to do. See you next time.